And the reason for that is because candles are great for giving reversals, but they're not a system. So we're going to be focusing on the candles today for the early reversals and other major attributes. But the trade, the whole trading triad success system, and by the way, this is a registered uh, trademark. That's what that little R is about there. And triad is the Latin word for three, to be a successful, truly long-term profitable trader, trader, whether you're trading full-time, to have the luxury of working from home and not worrying about losses, uh, or if you are trading, and, and what's great about Forex is you can trade all hours of the night, whether you're trading part-time and looking for an income stream, uh, this is a success system. Try it as a word for three. You need three legs. First leg is counter-trying techniques. Second leg is Western tools. And the third leg is money management. What do I mean by money management? Risk-reward analysis, so forth. And uh, you need all three of these legs, and I'll talk about how to be very comfortable, to be a true candlestick master to be uh, to learn the complete trading triad in um, a, a little bit. Uh, the Japanese say his potential trigger, and that's what money management is all about. Lots of traders forget about money management, and we're going to be looking at this critical aspect. In fact, at, towards the end of the session, one aspect of money management is my all-time most important trading rule, and I'll be revealing that to you later in the session, so stay tuned. Now, you're going to see how candles are very easy to learn, but once again, don't let the simplicity fool you. You're going to quickly see how they're going to make you money in two ways, keeping you out of bad trades and letting you get into trades very early. So for those new to candles, we're going to quickly go over the construction of the candlestick line. And because of the uh, large group here, uh, we're going to hold off on questions. I'll, t I'll take a couple of questions at the end of the session. Uh, but if you do have any questions about the construction of the candlestick line, be sure to ask it because everything we're going to be doing in the next 45 minutes or so is going to be underpinned by knowing how to draw the candlestick line. So the candlestick line is made of two components. There's a rectangular portion called the real body, and the real body is black or white. Some charming packages might be green and red, but it doesn't matter. It's the same concept. And the real body is the relationship between the open and the close. If the close is higher than the open, the top of the white real body with the empty real body is the close in the session. A black real body, not surprisingly, means that the market closed under the open. Now, this could be for any time frame. Intraday, daily, weekly, it doesn't matter. So let's say the euro opened at 135 on the daily chart and closed at 135.20. The 135.20 would be the top of the white real body. How do we know that? Because it's a white real body. Now, the lines above and below the real bodies are called the shadows. So the top of the upper shadow is the high of the session, and the bottom of the lower shadow is the lower of the session. And before we move on, are there any questions on the construction of the candlestick line? They're very simple to draw, but I just want to make sure everybody understands it. Great. So let's move on. Now, earlier I had mentioned there are three major advantages. The first one, I had mentioned the early reversal signals. The second one helping you avoid potentially bad trades. And we'll be looking at some examples in a few minutes. Let me discuss the third one now. And the reason I wanted to wait for now is because I wanted to make sure we understood how to draw the candlestick line. Let's think about this. The four data points we need to make the candlestick line, a line are high, close, open, and low. What do we need to make a bar chart? Which data points? Exactly, the same thing, open, high, low, and close. So what that means, and keep this in mind, this is a very important aspect, that all bar charting techniques, moving averages, oscillators, trend lines, uh, it doesn't matter what you, you use now, everything you learn at Options U, uh, everything you learn elsewhere, you can use on the candlestick chart. So by using a candlestick chart, you can get all your classic bar charting, Western charting uh, techniques, but by adding the extra visual dimension of candlesticks, you're going to get insights and timing advantages you cannot get anywhere else. And we're going to look at this in a couple of minutes. You're going to see how candlesticks give you twice the information of a bar chart. Now, the lines to your right are called doji. And doji look like crosses. And there's no rectangular portion. A doji is a session where the open and closing are the same. Uh, and Doja are quite good at calling potential reversals. So let's move on now. 
since there are no questions about the construction of the candlestick line, the Japanese say every candlestick line tells a story. Japanese are really very picturesque in their terminology, and that was you know one of the incentives that kept me going year after year when I was uh, doing the research. I spent big bucks on, on translations, uh, but I you know I like the I, I like the way the Japanese describe things. It was very metaphorical and, and analogies and so forth. But more than that, I saw results to the bottom line as I did more research, and that's what you're going to find also. Again, the core concept of education. So what do I mean by every candlestick line tells a story? What this means is that you can use the real bodies and the shadows to gauge the force of the trend. So let's for, first focus on the real body. Who's in charge here with this tall white real body? And again, you know, you don't have to type in the answer. The bulls, right? Market opens near the low, the low and close near the high. A black real body means during that session the bears are in charge. Now, as the real body gets smaller and smaller, whether it's doji or small real bodies, it's giving us a strong visual clue. The immediately preceding trend is losing steam. So let's look at a real an example here. Now, this is a bar chart, and this looks, you know, the market looks fairly healthy. I don't know what you know pair or current or across this is, but it doesn't matter. This works, you know, in all the forex markets. And in fact, candles are great in forex. Uh, if you know, if you're a novice with candles, or you don't know how to use candles, or even if you're an expert, you know we do have resources that are going to tell you how to use the candles in the forex market, uh, and we'll talk talk about that obviously today. But keep in mind that probably the most technically oriented traders of any market is definitely forex. The highest percentage of technical analysts is forex. They've done studies in Europe years ago, and this is even before, before the retail side became interested in Forex. Some 90 or 95 percent of traders in the Forex market were using technical analysis. So our job is get, getting you signals before other traders who use technical analysis get them. You want to be, you you want to get in before the market does its thing, and I'm going to show you ways to begin to do that today. So let me show you, as shown by the title here, the cost of not using candles. Now here we have a bar chart in this red circular area. The market looks fairly high. Uh, and remember what I said before, whatever you do to make a candlestick chart, you do to make a, uh, I'm sorry, a bar chart, you make a candlestick chart. So we're going to convert this bar chart to a candlestick chart. And notice the different, the whole different picture we're getting, the same information but a whole different perspective. This market looks healthy, but the candlesticks are telling us something. Those small real bodies in the doji are showing us the trend has gone from up to more neutral. So there's a definite warning to be careful about adding to long positions. I wouldn't be selling short because the market's still holding up fairly well, but knowing not to look, go long would have saved us big, big bucks. You're looking at hundreds of pips here. That's why I titled knowing what not to do, knowing not to go long here, can be just as valuable as knowing what to do. This is These ideas are so simple and easy to use. You're going to be able to implement whatever I talk about today, starting down our path to education immediately. Stuff like this is going to keep, you know, these concepts are going to keep more money in your trading account for the higher probability trades. Now, as the real body gets smaller and smaller, we wind up with doji. And as shown here, the Japanese would say, with a doji, the market is tired. And that's a wonderful way of thinking about it. So, and I'll get over the, t I'll, I'll discuss the title here. I'm going to show you why candlesticks give you twice the information of a bar chart. So, who's in charge? And again, you know, we'll be doing a little bit, uh, I'll be testing your knowledge a little bit later in the session here. So, you know, you don't have to answer this now. But think about this mentally. Who's in charge during the, these green arrow sessions? Relatively tall white real bodies? Obviously the bulls, right? And in one session, the whole tone of the market had changed. Who's in charge during that doji session? Bulls? Bears? Or is the market in equilibrium? Such a simply, a beautiful, simple candlestick signal, the doji, but we could visually see with the opening and closing the same, the markets in balance between the bulls and the bears. Isn't this wonderful? So simple yet so powerful. So in one session, the, tr the trend had changed. And why do candles give you twice the information? Think about this. 
the candlestick line, like the bar chart, will give us the price, correct? But what the candlestick line does is it also gives us the momentum behind the move. And that is one of the major secrets to using the candlesticks. Use the size of the real body, also the shadows. We don't have time much to get into shadows today. But use the size of the real body to gauge the market momentum. So here on the doji, the momentum is easing. The Japanese would say with something like this, the bulls are losing their breath. Now, as I mentioned in the overview, we're going to be going over some misuses. So let's go over a misuse alert. I'd like this to be able to flash. And one of the more common misuses is because doji are so easy to see, people think immediately that if you see a doji, the trend goes from up to down. It doesn't work that way, folks. When you see a doji, it means the trend has gone from up to neutral. It doesn't mean from up to down. And what we're using with technical analysis, what we want to do with technicals, especially with candles when used properly, we're evaluating the odds, the probabilities. On our, We want to get them on our side. So the odds of the market rallying after doji is lower than the odds of the market rallying after a tall right real body. So with a tall right real body, the odds are better that the market's going to rally. With a doji, the, the odds have decreased. If we have a doji, are the odds of the market rallying zero? Of course not. There's nothing 100%. The Japanese say, you know, even monkeys fall from trees. <laughs> nothing is 100%. There are some nuances. We don't have time to get into the session. Obviously, again, you know, we're doing an hour. I do, you know, day, two full day seminars. But for example, if you have a doge, you could use the high of the doge's resistance. If the market closes above it, it's a bullish breakout. So there's lots of things you could do with doji that, uh, you know, the limited nature of the session we won't be able to get into. But remember that misuse. A doji doesn't mean the market's going to go from up to down. It goes from up to neutral. Now, one of the more potent and important candlestick signals is called the hammer. The market is moving down. We have a very long lower shadow. The Japanese say the market is hammering out a base. And the lower shadow should be at least twice the height of the real body. Once again, the simplicity of the candles, that long lower shadow, is showing us the market is rejecting lower levels. Now, what I'm showing now in the next few slides, the hammer and the shooting star, the candlestick signals are going to be the same whether it's forex or non-forex. When we move on in, the, in a couple of minutes, when we start talking about the dual candlestick signals, the engulfing patterns and so forth, you're going to see the subtle but important differences between forex and non-forex. So a hammer is a potential bottom reversal signal. Uh, the real body can be black or white. And uh, the hammer, in this case, confirms the support area. Now, before I mention, whatever you do on a bar chart, you do on a candlestick chart. I'm going to look at that a little bit more. But with this blue or you know greenish line in that red arrow be support on the bar chart. Of course it is. Whatever you do on a bar chart, you certainly should do on a candlestick chart. You know, I have my niche is candlestick charts since I revealed them to the Western world, but I have I've been using Western technicals since nineteen seventy four. And I incorporate Western technicals onto my analysis. So there's nothing more basic than a support line. That support line is the same on a bar chart as it is a candlestick chart. But now we say we have a hammer, this red arrow, confirming that support area. What does that do? It dramatically increases the probability of the market moving up. Now let me show you a neat secret strategy. A couple of things. First, okay. The hammer should become a support area. That's not really a secret strategy. I may have talked about that in my books. The law of the hammer should be support based on a close. So the market moved under here. Uh, the euro moved under here, but didn't close under it. So it was still a support area. But let me show you a, a, a neat strategy that is not in my books. Let me clear this. Very often, the market, and it's OK, by the way, for a hammer to have a little bit of an upper shadow. Okay, very often the market will get into the lower half of the shadow of the hammer. So you can see how it had a bit of a rally there. But I'd say 60, 65% of the time, you're going to see something like this where the market tests the lower shadow. And if the market is good, it should hold it as support. And I like the test of the lower shadow because if the market does hold, what you've done is expand it on a base. The bigger the base, the better the rally. So it's a little Tactic there, you could write down. That's not revealed really in.
was the bearish counterpart, and the bearish counterpart of the hammer is the shooting star. Does this look bullish or bearish? You know, we've been doing this for half an hour, and look how easy it is to understand what the candlestick signals are showing us. The long upper shadow. Okay, sometimes some traders will call us a tail. That's fine. The market is visually showing, showing us it's rejecting higher levels. The Japanese call us a shooting star because they say it looks like a comet blazing across the sky, potentially a bearish signal. So here we have a shooting star, and notice, it, by the way, the shooting star should become a resistance area. And notice what happened. As the market got to the shooting star, we had a doji and another shooting star. The more signals we have joining at a, the same level, in, in other words, a support or resistance area, we've, it, we're increasing the odds of the trade working out. And look what happened after. This is one of the major tactics to most powerfully and correctly using the candlesticks. If I usually see a candlestick signal like a doji, not confirming something else, I'd usually, usually use that to exit. But if I see a candlestick signal confirming something else, then we should think about or could think about initiating a new position. Candles are wonderful for letting us know when to exit. That's one of the secrets to really being a successful trader. Many, you know, many books and many resources out there that tell you when to enter a market, but when the, when the heck do you get out? <laughs> and candles are really good at it. And as a general rule, if I see a single candlestick signal that's not confirming something else, I would use that as an exiting signal. So you can see how quickly and powerfully candles can add to the winning percentages. Here we have some candlestick signals confirming another one. And the greater the probabilities, the more successful you're going to be. And speaking of probabilities, <laughs> yeah, I wish. <laughs> So as we move on, let's start looking at some differences between the candlestick signal and uh, actually we'd like to stay on, the, stay on the slide as long as we can, right? <laughs> so let's move on, regret regrettably. Okay, so here we have a non-forex bullish engulfing pattern. And I, I would guess, and again, I, I, don't, I didn't make this as a, a survey or a poll, but I would think at least half of you or a quarter of you also trade equities or options. So... Uh, you know, this is a non-forex bullish engulfing pattern. The market is moving down. We have a white real body wrapping around a black real body. Now, the non-forex, notice how the opening is below the prior session's close. In other words, the market gapped down on the open. Uh, on the next session, whether this is a, it doesn't matter, a daily chart, a 10-minute chart, you know, 30-minute chart, it doesn't matter. Gapped down on the opening and then made a white real body that wrapped around the black real body. As soon as you hear the word gap, you know that's not going to be normally true in Forex because the Forex market is a 24-hour market. It's rare to have gaps. So what's going to happen in Forex is this is a perfectly acceptable bullish engulfing pattern in the Forex market. The opening, and I should have made this out a little better, it's okay for the opening and closing to be the same. Actually, even if the open is a pip or two higher or lower, than the prior close. And the reason I say a pip or two higher is because some charting packages might have a pip or two difference. You know, there's no official. Most charting packages will be 5 o'clock Eastern time. It's kind of the default for the close. Uh, but one charting package might have something like this where maybe the open of the white candle is a pip or two above the prior black candle. Some might have it the same. But essentially, if the open is about the same within the pip or two of the prior close, that is perfectly acceptable to be a bullish engulfing pattern in the Forex market. So, case in point. Okay, here we have a bullish engulfing pattern in the Forex market. In fact, let me see how, how astute you are, how much you've been paying attention. Here we have a bullish engulfing pattern in the red semicircle. What candlestick signal is here before the bullish engulfing pattern that gave us a little bit of a hint? And uh, type it in. just wanted to show you how easy it is to pick this up. And again, you're in privatized mode, so you won't be able to see each other's messages. And the reason for that is because we really want to focus you to focus on the important information, you know, I'm revealing in this seminar. So, what do you see there? At that red arrow. Okay, what candlestick signal? We looked at it a couple of minutes ago. It could be a black or a white real body. Great, that's right. It's a hammer. Very long lower shadow, small real body. And even before the hammer, who's in charge here? 
the bears, right? And notice what's happening here. These small real bodies are giving us a sense the prior trend is losing steam. What was the prior trend? Down. See how easy it is? You know, are we learning a lot? Even if we've been here, like I said, 35 minutes. Okay, let's move on. A cluster of candles, higher percentages on your side. So here, we have a hammer. The low of the hammer should be support. And look at we ha look what we had at the low of the hammer, or near the low of the hammer. This white candle, wrapped around the black candle, that's right, a bullish engulfing pattern. What you're going to be able to do, you know, one of the great advantages of the Forex market is we don't have many markets to track. You know, in equities, you look at thousands and thousands. You know, we maybe you may be looking at four or five markets, and what's great is with the candles, you can flip through them very quickly, and these signals, the hammers, the engulfing patterns, are going to jump out you immediately. You, you know, you don't have to do major analysis. You can see the candlestick signals very, very quickly. You're going to find a very fast visual form of analysis that's really going to give you timing advantages ahead of the competition. Now, here's a non-forex bearish engulfing pattern. Black wrapping around the white. Open above the prior close. See that? Forex bearish engulfing pattern. Why? Because if the opening is the same as the prior close, that's perfectly acceptable for Forex. Here we have a bearish engulfing pattern. Now the bearish engulfing pattern must come after a little uptrend, and we certainly had one. Okay, now we're going to be looking at another misuse. And again, I have there's dozens of misuses, and we're looking at a few of the critical ones. Okay, one of my trading principles, okay, my dozen trading principles, this is one of them, and this is something most traders forget about. A candlestick line or pattern requires two criteria. Now, most traders will realize that you need the shape of the line or the pattern. So, in other words, a bearish engulfing pattern, let me go back here. A bearish engulfing pattern is a black candle wrapped around a white candle. What most traders forget about or don't realize unless they go through the time and effort to begin their education, as you are doing here, is you also have to take into account the preceding trend. A bearish engulfing pattern must come after a rally. A hammer must come after a downtrend, even a short-term downtrend. Okay. So with that in mind, let's move on. Here we saw that bearish engulfing pattern. Now, let me show you how not having the correct information, that's why I made the title of the slide, misinformation can cost you bucks. Now, in that red ellipse, okay, what pattern is that? Now, it's a black real body wrapping around a white real body. What pattern is that? And you don't have to type it in, but think about it. I'm going to play a little music from Jeopardy. <laughs> dum, 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 dum. Actually, I would have loved to have written music. I, I don't know if you know the background, but Merv Griffin, who was the uh, producer of uh, Jeopardy, he said it took him like 10 minutes to make, it, I think it's called The Thinking Song, uh, and he gets $15 million a year in royalties from that. Every time somebody plays that song, he gets money. Nice, uh, nice leverage of time. <laughs> anyway, here we have the black wrap around the white, but that is not a bearish engulfing pattern. Why? Because the immediately preceding trend is either down, or you could even look at it as sideways. The point is that the preceding trend was not down. So this is not a bearish engulfing pattern. Before this seminar, you probably would have thought this was a bearish engulfing pattern. You might have been thinking about selling there. And essentially, you could have lost anywhere from 50 to 150 pips on this misinformation. And understanding the nuances, and there's lots and lots of nuances like this, but understanding the really simple but powerful nuances like this will put money in your pocket by keeping your money in your pocket. I've seen traders lose thousands of dollars by doing mistakes like this. So we've seen not only how we could start making money by using maybe the hammer support or thinking about buying the hammer, but knowing what not to do. Now, let's go into the next scenario, and I'm going to show you how Getting in on these winning trades could really, you know, give you big bucks.
notes. And I really like, and again, I apologize for this background, for this conversion. Uh, you know, I tried to do this a little better, but this was the best it is. And um, what William was saying, his techniques and strategies turn and trading around. Uh, and there's that word again. It's very simple. And that's what it's all about. It's simple. We're not looking at major brain-busting strategies here. And I'm going to go over one of the strategies. And I mentioned, you know, using my strategies. Uh, I'm going to go over one of my strategies now that will really help, uh, as I said before, let you get into the market before it does its thing. And part of that strategy has to do with one of my trading principles. First trading principle, not not, not my first one, but I'm going to talk about it. Uh, and again, I talk about these trading principles, and number 10 doesn't mean it's less important than number 5. I just arbitrarily number them. And I'll be revealing my all-time most important trading principle later in the session. It's not, number, it's not no, titled number 1, but it is the most important one. And I had mentioned this obliquely before. The more signals we have joined together, the more likely reversal. And that's whether it's a combination of candlestick signals or Western signals. So we saw a hammer confirming support. If a doji confirmed, confirmed resistance and so forth, we've greatly increased the likelihood of a turn. Now, let me combine this strategy. You know, in the prior slide, you know, uh, William was saying, you know, how the strategies had really made him nice money. Let me show you one of these strategies. And it's actually one of, uh, a great secret strategy uh, because it really shows you how you could begin to use the word, uh, use the power of the candles to truly separate yourself from the competition. So let me show you something interesting. Now, I had mentioned before the real power of candles is knowing, you know, how to use them as exiting. So in the uh, pound, and I'm sure many of you tra trade with the pound dollar. Okay, we had a major resistance area. Okay, we've you know since exceeded that, but you know I'm going to show you something really neat. Uh, in 91 and 92, this is a monthly chart. Major resistance around the two, the 201 area in the pound dollar. So, what you do is what I did for our clients is I put the this is the long term resistance area. Okay, based on the monthly chart I showed you before, and I threw it onto the daily chart. And the question I have, there's two questions here. Is the pound at resistance? And obviously the answer is yes. But let me show you something. Let me show you something really interesting. Are there any signs that the candle signals are showing the bulls are losing steam. What candlestick signal do we have there in the red semicircle? And type it in. Great. That's right. A doge, that real body is so small. Super. Boy, you, you're really picking it up. And again, think about this. Think of the insight you're getting in 45 minutes. Great. And it's not quite a shooting star, by the way, because a shooting star should have uh, a very long upper shadow. Let me show you something really interesting. Let me get rid of this. On that tall white candle, is the market at resistance? The answer is yes. Now, remember, we don't know what happened. The bulls are losing steam. And the answer is no. Yet in one session and then the one after, we are getting signs the bulls are losing steam. And so what we essentially done is having a candlestick signal confirming a major resistance area. This was big bucks, folks, because what you would have seen, and this was an easy setup, okay, you would have had a major reversal signal here, the bearish engulfing pattern, even if, you, you know, this was a great shorting opportunity because you would have set a stop. By the way, you could use candlestick signals to set stop areas. So the higher the bearish engulfing pattern should be in resistance. But even if you didn't, you know, go short there, maybe you were long on this bearish engulfing pattern, and you could have used this to cover, to exit your longs. You're looking at four or 500 pips maybe on that one trade. This was a slam dunk, folks. And this, because this bearish engulfing pattern confirmed a major resistance area. See how simple this is? So this was either a great exit if you were long or a really good shorting opportunity. And our target, and we're going to go through this a little bit later, 
if you shorted here, our support area would have been the low of the bullish engulfing pattern. And I don't show it here, but the low of the correction that the pound made stopped at this bullish engulfing pattern. We're going to look at this slide a little bit later to show you how by using the candles you would have picked the high in the pound and the June lows in the pound. And you're going to be kicking yourself for not having the knowledge back then. So what have we done so far? Think about that in the short session. We've gone over the basic construction of the candlestick line. We've seen how the candles, and we're going to have some more slides in a couple of minutes. We've seen how the candles will give you twice the information of the bar chart. Because like a bar chart, the candlestick line is going to give you the price. But unlike a bar chart, it's going to give you the force behind the move. And this is one of the keys to using candlesticks correctly. Then we looked at, and I think you'll all agree with me, who here would ever go back to a bar chart? Can you think of a reason to use a bar chart? Of course not. Okay, it's only a matter of education. The only reason people, everybody in the world doesn't use candlesticks is because of education. And by the way, again, it's a real credit to you because even people who think they know how to use the candles and don't learn from my resources are not using them correctly. So it's, it's a credit to you that you took the time and effort to come here to start to learn how to use them correctly. So a simple doji. Looks like a cross. It can give you a jump on the competition. The prior trend could be losing momentum. Avoiding dangerous misuses of candles. Remember, candle a doji doesn't mean the trend goes from up to down. It goes from up to neutral. Uh, one of the secrets to making money with candles is combining them with Western technicals. If you have a candlestick signal confirming the Western signals, that's a major timing advantage or timing signal. Some missing trading principles. Again, I have about 12 or 14 of them. We looked at a couple of them. This power of co combining east with west. The importance of looking at the trend, not just the candlestick pattern, but the trend before the pattern. And the power, this is really important, the first two legs of the triad. We'll look at a little bit on the third leg in a couple of minutes. The first two legs of the triad, eastern technicals, that is candles with western technicals. And how candle patterns are different in the forex market the bullish engulfing pattern, the bearish engulfing pattern, and so forth. You know, we haven't looked at, you know, uh, uh, dark cloud covers and piercing patterns and so forth. So, so remember today we really just started down the path to education. We're going to be looking at a couple of slides in a couple of minutes. But did you really learn, learn at least one or two concepts that could really help you improve your timing entering and exiting the market? And hopefully the answer is yes. Now remember, you know, at the beginning of the seminar, I said I wasn't able to squeeze all I knew into one hour. So the Japanese say a single tree doesn't make a forest. What we've done today is not even looking at a tree. We've looked at a branch. And as I mentioned before, one of the key aspects of really separating yourself from the competition is education. Now, because of my relationship, this is what you're going to be able to take advantage of. Again, I charge $2,000 an hour for these questions. Okay, now, uh, let me just put the whole thing on here. And I may run a little bit more than an hour, so I hope you don't mind. Uh, you're getting your money's worth, considering it was no cost, right? <laughs> okay, what Gary was saying, he went long. Let me just go through these very quickly. Let me show you where he went long. You see that red arrow there? Oh, and oh, let me just make this a little better. Okay, in this charting package, the green uh, candles are the same as a white candle, and a red candle is the same as a black candle. So what Gary did, and he, he said he went long at the bullish engulfing pattern because the white, the red, uh, the green candle wrapped around the black candle, or the green wrapped around the red, and he had other things, spinning tops here, uh, a break of the trend line. He used he uses an eight period exponential moving average, and he went on and on. And essentially, he had a, a group of signals, and this is what it's all about: getting a group of signals confirming the candlestick signal. The problem is he forgot about the third leg of the triad. And let me show you. Was this a good trade that just didn't work out or did he make a mistake in judgment that he can't see? And the answer is he made a mistake in judgment. And the mistake in judgment is this. And let me give you first let me give you, before I do this, I'm going to reveal my all-time most important trading rule. And I have lots of critical rules, and this is one of the key ones. Whenever you do a trade, think about risk-reward. So getting back to that trading rule, 
Let's think about this. If Gary went long here on that bullish engulfing pattern and he had lots of signals confirming it, think about this risk reward. The yellow horizontal line that just emerged, it would be my target. Everybody might have a little different target, but that's a resistance area. This red, or I'm sorry, the white line would be support. Use the lower the bullish engulfing pattern as support. So essentially, if Gary bought in this bullish engulfing pattern, he has a one to one risk reward. That is a trade you do not take. And by knowing this, you would be avoiding a losing trade. And this is why the trading triad, and that's the focus of the Forex DVD workshop, the trading triad is the candle signals, which he knew about. He knew about the Western signals. He forgot about money management, risk reward analysis. Very, very important. So let me show you, and again, stay with me. I'm going to give you the special link in a couple of minutes to video resources on this link. But let me show you how easy it is to become a confident trading trader. Okay, what signal do we have here in that? And I'm not going to show you what market this is. Okay, I just want to show you how easy it is and how you're starting the path down the path of becoming a truly confident trader. What candlestick signal is that? Black wrapping around the white. That's right, a bearish engulfing pattern. So what you do is you take the high of the bearish engulfing pattern, you make that resistance based on the close. Now, what signal do we have on the green arrow? That's right, the doji. Now, let me show you a little trick question here. I'm going to, what signal is this here? And I'm going to give you a little hint. Great call. Okay, none. It, okay, and this is great. And you're saying bullish engulfing pattern, bullish engulfing pattern, bullish engulfing pattern. Okay, let me show you why you need the continuing education. By the way, don't trade, you know, we're getting, going over some great things here. I hope you're enjoying the seminar. Find it, you know, as valuable as, I, as much as I enjoy presenting it. But let me show you just one of these little clues how it's going to save you big buck, big bucks. And we've been here an hour. Imagine what you're going to get with a five and a half hour DVD workshop. This is not a bullish engulfing pattern. Let me repeat that. This is not a bullish engulfing pattern. Because a bullish engulfing pattern must come after a downtrend. Okay? So let me show you what market this is. Okay, this was the highs that the euro made in late April. So essentially, you sold at the highs in the euro. Here's that bearish engulfing pattern. Okay, let me write up here. Okay, here's that bearish engulfing pattern. Here's that doji. The bearish engulfing pattern becomes resistance. And let me show you how you would have saved money. See that X over here? That was not a bullish engulfing pattern because the trend was wrong. That was in the slide we saw before. So think about this. You know, what's one of the best ways to make money? To not lose money. And by knowing this was not a bullish engulfing pattern, look at how many pips you would have saved. Think about it. Well, there's a cost to it. You know, there's two, there's a price to really being a successful trader. One option is to make a trade like this with, you know, you're trading on ignorance and lose enough money that's going to take you months and months to recoup. The other option is, the other option is to spend or invest in the limited resources, uh, in a limited amount, that's all it is, in continued education. It's much cheaper to know not to be going long here than go through all the emotional and financial pain as this. And you would have recognized also this was an important top. Now we're becoming more confident. <laughs> See how quickly this can add to the bottom line? Now, look at the low that the euro made. Wouldn't you have loved to have seen this? 
back in June. A classic hammer. And if you miss the hammer, by the way, a little bullish engulfing pattern coming after a little bit of a downtrend. Let's look at this pound again. Okay, that we saw this before. Remember, this was the bearish engulfing pattern confirming resistance area. This was a great exit for longs or for those who were short. Now, when we got the signal, remember I said before, and sorry again, this should have been a little better. Let me do a red semicircle here. The low of the bullish engulfing pattern was support. Let me show you how easy it is, even with these basic candlestick signals, to buy before the market does its thing. So we know this green, the low of the bullish engulfing pattern becomes support. So the green horizontal line becomes support. Look what we got near the support area. What is on that green line there, that green uh, arrow? And you don't have to answer this. That's right, the hammer. And you could, if you bought that hammer, remember, that you could either risk to the low of the bullish engulfing pattern, or if you wanted the tightest stop, the low of the hammer becomes a support level. Notice how that held. And we're looking at hundreds of hundreds of pips. Even if you bought it, let's say, 196.50, and maybe looked at this as a resistance area, or maybe up here as a resistance area, you're looking at at least 300, 350 pips here. You may be looking at 450 pips here. And because this hammer here confirmed a very obvious low. So we call the high and the low with something as simple and as powerful as the engulfing pattern. And if you had only seen this, correct? <laughs> the Japanese say, if heaven drops a fig, open your mouth. Now, how many of you have gone back and said to, you, said to yourself, you know, ah, you know, if I've only seen this. This is what it's all about, seeing a golden opportunity, and more importantly, taking advantage of it, having the confidence to take advantage of it. And that's what education is all about. And of this nice, uh, you know, by using the you know, when you want to go to the next round, okay, we saw that before, okay, uh, obviously English, lovely, <laughs> check out the pound dollar, lovely, and he said the list goes on and on, but essentially, by trading the pound, and the reason I like the slides, because I did it here, is because we talked about the pound recently, and this is what it's all about, uh, getting those early reversal signals, getting ahead of the competition, and uh, he looks like a very content gentleman, he looks very relaxed. <laughs> So I can when I trade forex when I trade forex I use three forms of technical analysis I use them in coordination and the first one is candlesticks I use it in coordination with pivot points and fibonacci that's all I'm going to say so for those of you who are going to ask me if I actually use candlesticks in in trading forex yes I do and what else I use Fibonacci and pivot points, but it wouldn't happen for me without the candlesticks confirming what I'm seeing with the other stuff. So um, if you are interested in really starting to you know, get real technical with currencies, uh, you've, you've got to incorporate candlesticks, and I've said this many times. And those of you who don't uh, incorporate candlesticks into what you're doing, whether you're trading bonds, interest rates, stocks, commodities, whatever, uh, you better have candlesticks in your little, per, your own little proprietary mix. So uh, I would take advantage of Steve's uh, generous offer here. Uh, the unlimited support that he is offering is priceless. I use pivot points and Fibonacci in there a lot also, and that's part of my proprietary mix. So you've got a great opportunity. I'm still sure. Uh, we have one. I like, you know, F and again, you know, uh, I'm not sure who Ron uses, but we really like FXCM uh, because they focus on education, FXCM.com. You can use my name. You know, maybe they'll hang up on you. <laughs> but we like them. Uh, again, you know, I don't trade through them. Most of my analysis is done for my institutional clients. Does the DVD course include a step-by-step -step trading plan? It, uh, not quite a step-by-step -step trading plan. It does include my blueprint for trading success. It looks, it discusses the ten things you have to look at to be a successful trader. For example, one of them is don't trade in front of an, uh, an important economic number. Uh, another one is look at the risk reward. Okay, what's the shortest time frame 
candlesticks can use in the forex market. Again, because I travel so much, I don't look at really, really short time frames. And I personally think if you're going in one and two minute, you're looking at a lot of noise. So I will pers again, this is personal because I'm not at the slides all the time. Most of my analysis is done at the end of the day for institutions. Uh, I'll look at daily 15 and 30 and 60 minutes. Normally, I don't go less than 15 minutes. And again, my analysis is given at the end of the day for the institutions. Right, Forex is not centralized in it, so it's rare to see gaps intraday. Okay, if somebody, or Wade said he bought some videos last week, for any, can again, Paul's email address. He'll never sleep, so you could email him any time of the night. You know, you can call him any time of the night. Just kidding, no, don't. <laughs> The question is, you know, my educational, I, my focus is education, and uh, that's really what I like doing best. Okay, the shooting star is a very long upper shower. It's a potentially bearish signal, yes. Okay, there are other questions here, uh, you know, I, I, that's beyond the scope of here, the session, so. Yeah, Paul. Uh, Glass is saying Paul doesn't sleep much. I don't. I don't. I believe he's excellent about answering questions. Yeah. Okay. Again, this is really not a uh, uh, a platform for going over how the forex market works and placing overnight trades and all that. If you confirmed an email and you were able to be 